If you wanna make the best chicken enchiladas with homemade sauce, then you've gotta check out my chicken enchilada recipe. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. These enchiladas will be ready before you know it. So let's get started. First off, we're gonna make a homemade enchilada sauce. You could use store-bought, but the enchilada sauce you make at home is so easy and it's perfect for eggs in the morning, over rice, the works. We're gonna mix our spices in a small bowl, starting with the chili powder. And I like mine like fairly spicy, but the rest of the family is on the mild side of life. So normally I would add three tablespoons of chili powder. Today I'm gonna add just two and a little blessing of extra. One teaspoon of cumin and Brian only bought whole cumin seeds, so I painstakingly <laughs> minced this up. I don't, couldn't find my mortar and pestle. One quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. This adds a little something extra. I really love it in here. You can skip it if you hate cinnamon for some reason. We're gonna add one teaspoon of garlic powder in here. There you go. And finally, a quarter teaspoon of oregano, dried, please. Give that a little bit of a mix. Now we're gonna be on the cooktop. I'm going to make a simple roux. Into a medium saucepan, I'm adding uh, three tablespoons of oil. You could use vegetable oil or olive oil. I'm using olive today. We're gonna get the oil nice and hot over medium high heat. Once that oil's dancing in the pan, we're gonna add three tablespoons of flour and whisk as you go. This is gonna be the base that'll thicken everything up and give us like a nice rich uh, mouthfeel. Just whisk it for a minute to cook the flour. You don't wanna burn the flour, so whisk, whisk, whisk. Now we're gonna whisk in the spices. <laughs> oh, that is a lot of flavor. It gets smoky and you're really blooming them. One cup of tomato sauce. Whisk, 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 whisk. It's a beautiful, <laughs> oh my God, spices. It's a beautiful dark color. Um, <laughs> the chili like became uh, atomized. <laughs> it's really thick, it's really thick and luscious. We're gonna pour in two cups of chicken stock right now. If you wanna do a veggie version of this for whatever reason, then you can use vegetable stock, of course. So whisk that in. Just like when you make any sauce and you're adding the liquid to your roux, whisk and pour slowly. Whisk fast, pour slow. This is basically done. I'm gonna let this kind of hang out over here. I'm gonna whisk occasionally as I go. It'll thicken up and become really delicious. We will be adding some salt and pepper to taste and a little bit of vinegar, but first has to thicken up. I'm gonna add in probably about half a teaspoon of salt and then whisk in about two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. This can feel very flat. You need the vinegar, the acid to wake it up. There we go. It's starting to thicken up too. And this looks very deceiving because it doesn't look, looks kind of watery, but it thickens up as it cools down and after the bake too. I will let this simmer for a bit though. While that bubbles away, I'm gonna be mincing, oh, about five cloves of garlic and one medium onion. Maybe not all of this, because this is kind of a large onion. Give your onion, <laughs> give the garlic a smash. Get that skin off. It also helps release the oils and then start mincing it up after they're all smashed. So my mom is from Mexico and we grew up with like a version of this. This is not an authentic enchilada though. It's just kind of like what we like making at home. And I like making it so much, I wanted to share it with you too. You can let me know in the comments if you like to add anything to it or if you use a different sauce. I totally want to try things out. You can also let me know in the comments if you're as annoyed as I am by having sticky garlic fingers. This is the bane of my existence because I cut a lot of garlic and the skin is so sticky. It's really annoying. <laughs> All right, give these a good mince. Set that aside and we're gonna mince up the onion. You don't have to use a full big one. I do love onion though. And you watch those fingertips when you're chopping. You cut like this. You don't wanna have your, your little fingers out. You wanna have your knuckles guiding the knife. All right, these are all, oh, <clears throat> there is an air of like a whole force field of chili here. Right now we're going to place this larger skillet over medium high heat, add three tablespoons of oil. 
Once that oil is nice and hot, we're gonna add our onions in. These will cook for about five minutes while mixing, you know, somewhat frequently, so they kind of become translucent, not burnt. Of course, as you go, you can season with salt and pepper. I like to add a little bit in the beginning. Right now, the onions are becoming translucent. They're almost ready for the garlic. It's a good time to go ahead and get your shredded chicken out so it is ready to dump in. Let's add all the garlic in. Okay, now I'm adding a pound and a half of my shredded chicken right here. At this point, the chicken's like ice cold. I shredded it a while ago, so you wanna warm it up, mix it in with those onion and garlic flavors. And if you're in a hurry, you could definitely just buy a rotisserie chicken and shred it up yourself. You don't have to, you know, bake or boil or do whatever you want with a chicken. I know you need some time savers every once in a while. Now, I'm gonna add this magical enchilada sauce right over here. And just mix that in. You can see the chicken is gonna absorb so much delicious flavor from it. I wanted a little bit more. Oh my gosh, the smell is so good. Okay, that's good. Let's take this off heat, get our casserole dish out and our tortillas. I have something to tell you about the tortillas though. It's very important. Okay, so before you assemble, you want about three cups or so of a Mexican blend. It's gonna be cheddar, Monterey Jack, and then the other two can kind of change. There's gonna be queso quesadilla, asadero, but it's really up to you. If you want, you can just use whatever delicious melty cheeses you like. That's about three cups. You wanna be kind of generous with the cheese, I will say that. And now we're gonna get the tortillas out. Okay, so don't kill me. I know the authentic way to make chicken enchiladas is with corn tortillas, but I do not love corn tortillas unless they're fresh corn tortillas or a couple different, there's a couple brands I really love, but I cannot get them at my local store. So I'm gonna do flour today. On to each tortilla. We're gonna add a generous spoonful of the enchilada sauce, almost like you're making a little pizza. Now we're gonna add a generous amount of the chicken mixture. It's like one eighth of the total. You don't wanna be unkind, not share all the chicken. Top with the cheese. Then we're gonna roll this up and place that into our casserole dish. There we go, nice and cozy. Repeat for the other seven enchiladas. It's actually easier if you set up a little assembly line, so why was I doing this to begin with? <laughs> I'm so excited to eat these, I can't tell you. Okay, now we're gonna spoon enchilada sauce over the top, or just pour it over. I like to see a little bit of the tortillas poking out, but I want a lot of sauce on there. Now we have a little bit of cheese left, so let's just gracefully add that on. A little blessing of cheese. This is ready to go into the oven, 350 for about 20 minutes, or until the cheese is really nice and melty. Into the oven. Garnish with cilantro, sour cream, avocado, whatever you enjoy, and it's time to eat. If you like this recipe, check out my easy dinner playlist. That's really good. It's so good. I'll see you in the next video.